this is Richard from Gas Muggy Garage, but now I'm on a plane. And now I'm on the ground. And now I'm on a train. Now I'm in Vegas. And now I'm heading to Utah because when that call comes in for that car that I want to buy, well, I get on the road and I go try. So check this out. This time, I had to go through Vegas to get to Utah so I could go up and check on a very special car with only three owners so far. It's pretty wild. We had to stay overnight once we got there because the weather moved in. Now I'm in the snow and I'm ready to go. So sit back and watch a little tale about a Cadillac. How's it going, sir? Good. How you doing, Richard? You know, when I said I was coming through Vegas and I just pop up because it's only 100 miles, I didn't expect it to be all snow. <laughs> I mean, as as the as the scenery started changing, I was like, this is only 100 miles away. Yeah, it's uh, we're, we set about 5,600 feet up here, so we have our snow. Oh, okay, that's it, elevation. Yeah. Well, it's cool. It's pretty pretty country coming through here. So uh, what do we got? Well, we've got this 76 Cadillac uh, that I emailed you about. 76, that's uh, that's last year, this body style, I think. Is it, or is it 77? I don't know, it's close. Look at that lad interior. Love it. I'm not sure where the two original owners started from, but uh, I know he bought that after he moved from Salt Lake down to this area. Well, salt and, and car does not go together. No, they don't. These cars are pretty cool. I've had a bunch of them, and if they're, if they're right, if they're dialed in, they drive so perfect. So how long have they owned it, or did he own it? Um, I'm guessing about 10, 12 years. Let's see if all the doodads are under there. Ta-da. Looks like somebody's converted it to 134. Definitely. Got a old old yeah. style kill switch. Yep. <laughs> that was his favorite. Even his vet that I sold had one of those on it. 76. Is this the 500? Yeah. I believe it is. Yes. Yeah. This is the better of the big motors they put in these things. They got some torque. A lot of drag racers use these things. Love the plaid. They knew how to do it in the 70s. Eight track. I can't get over how clean everything is. Really pretty nice. So will it start up? Will we be able to take it for a ride? Always test them first, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now the brakes are there, they're just a little soft. Just all the way down. Got an eight track. Who are we listening to down here? Neil Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> My grandmother actually had one of these when I was in high school. I want to say I took it to either prom or homecoming or something, and uh, it just happened to be my school colors white and blue. Oh, cool. They made a bunch of these cars. I mean, there are so many, especially in 76 for some reason. And believe it or not, a perfect one of these with like 20 miles on it, 30 miles on it. I've seen them sell several of them. They only bring like 20, 25 grand with like zero miles on it. Yeah. It's pretty hilarious. Oh, uh, we were talking about it the other day about the... Uh the cost of, you know, what, like the Model T's and the Model A's, and you know, you would think as rare as they are that they would bring more, but they they don't, and I don't know why, but they sure don't. Now, that, that world's kind of over with. Well, it does everything it's supposed to do. Yep. Well, before we make a deal on this one, because I know about where you're at, what's under the covers back there? Okay, that's the, that's the classics of his collection. Well, no, that's a classic. These, <laughs> I can tell by just that front cliff right there, those are Antiques. super old. Antiques. Brass era. Yes, very much so. 100 plus years old. This one here is a 1918, I believe. 1919 is 1919, what it says. 1919, okay. Essex. 
Do these run and drive? They do. If uh, you know how to operate a tractor, right? If you know how to operate them, yes, exactly. This is uh, super cool looking. This one here is the real cool one. Get off the fender here. This one's a 1908 Buick. Looks barely original, like I know the wood's been replaced, maybe. Looks like it was restored in what, maybe the 70s? I'm not sure. He he actually bought this from his dentist, had it up in the Salt Lake area. And this was his pride and joy here. Well, both of them were. The problem with these old cars is, uh, they, you know, they kind of lost their luster. Nobody cares. The kids these days don't want to work on them. I mean, and, and to operate this car, you more or less have to understand how to work on a tractor, you know, and you have to have good knowledge of it. Well, you've got to understand what these are all about and this is all about. Well, you've got your spark and your advance. Right. And, uh, you know, what have you. So it's, it's literally like working a tractor. Yeah. This is going to have a little four cylinder in it, right? Uh huh. And then let's look at this Essex. I've seen cars like this at auctions lately going for next to nothing. They're really more like art, if you will. Oh, it's got the trunk on the back. Yeah, this is, uh, I think it was a Touring. Is that what they called these? Yeah, they would have called it a Touring or a Phaeton. I don't think they started calling them Phaetons until the mid to late 20s. Wooden wheels, super rad. Well, I don't know, Glenn. The caddies are all right. I mean, it's, it's all together. I like it when they're kind of unmessed with and hadn't been painted a bunch of times. It's obviously never been wrecked. But uh, what about the Buick and the Essex? Well, I know that they're pretty sentimental and oh, they're going to want sentiment. to Come on. Talk every, time they, every time they bring <laughs> up the word sentimental. So uh, I'm guessing that they're in the 20,000, 15 to 20,000 mark. For, for both? For individually. That's, that world's over with, I'm telling you. Uh, I get the sentimental part, but I'm not even in the realm to make a counter offer there. I, I was actually going to offer uh, 7,500 for the pair. <laughs> they're just, by the time you get them running and driving, they're only going to bring 7,500 to, to 8,500 across the block. So what's the number on this? Well, we've been asking 85 for this one. I can't do that because at the end of the day, it's just a nice old Cadillac, but it's a weird color. <sighs> like I was telling you, you know, a, a perfect one with like 20 miles on it, never been touched. They only bring about 20, 25 grand at auction. So I'm thinking this is more like a $4,500 car. Well, I know she turned down 6,500, uh, but she kind of wants to sell it. So six? I'll go to five and that's it. Well, I, she'll have to live with it. We'll do it. Cool. Yep. So there you go, guys and gals. I uh, came out here, I bought a 1976 Cadillac Eldorado, uh, and I probably didn't need to buy it, but it seems like it might be cheap enough. And now I'm on my way back down to Vegas with an empty money clip. Who the hell goes to Vegas with no money? Woo! So there you go. I'm on my way to Lost Wages with no wages. And since I'm already up here in Utah, I might as well check out my friends at Speed Tech Performance. Worst case scenario, go for a ride with them and get a little bit of adrenaline pumping. Stay tuned, you're gonna to wanna to see this next episode.